Well, greetings and welcome back. I have to admit that I was excited about the Democratic National Convention as they are knocking it out of the park. And as always, I enjoyed how Ronnie Chang talked about his music playlist on the CBS Morning Show. Okay, I'm a week or so behind and mentioned that he felt that Jackie Wilson's Your Love Keeps Lifting Me Higher and Higher would be the perfect song for the DNC due to his dynamics. And I had to agree. When you have someone like the fabulous Jackie Wilson, he just he defined dynamics, intensity, and outright passion. And regarding the DNC, if I had to choose my favorite presenter so far, it would be the New York U.S. representative for New York's 8th Congressional District, Hakeem Jeffries. His pr presentation could not have been any better, and he got the crowd rocking. It seems that our times today don't mesh with attempting meditation, but it couldn't hurt to try. And hey, I was thinking of giving it a whirl. Although it's the type of thing that probably wouldn't work for me, so maybe I should just meditate on meditation. <laughs> There's a reason that you continually hear these two songs on TV ads, and they are Come and Get Your Love by Redbone, that was from 1974, and Dancing in the Moonlight by King Harvest, and that's from 1972. They're both great tunes, relatable, dynamic, and inspirational. And I enjoy both of these tunes, and there's little wonder they're still in commercials after all these years. And remember that there are better things to do other than vaping, playing with your phone, or getting high. And as Anthony Bourdain claimed that with the hot dog, there was always a feeling of implied consent. We always knew or assumed that whatever was inside that snappy tube, it might contain any, anything from 100% kosher beef to dead zoo animals or parts of the missing Gambino family. With a hot dog, especially the New York's famous dirty water hot dog, there was a tacit agreement that you were on your own. They were pre-cooked anyway, so how bad could it be? And I do miss Anthony, indeed, a very talented and entertaining man while he was with us. And John F. Kennedy said something that is truly terrifying, guaranteed to make every parent's blood run cold. To have a child is to give fate a hostage. Information today is much more complicated than ever. It's become a deluge or flood, so to speak, of revisions, updates, and bewildering messages that occasionally contradict the previous message. It's exhausting, especially for someone my age, which is approaching 71. You have to be on your toes all the time. And I have to admit it, nobody wants to be on their toes all the time. They need a rest, too. And if I had to choose between comedy and being serious or taking care of business, I would definitely go with comedy. It's a hell of a lot more fun. Unfortunately, it often doesn't work that way. Nothing like reality. And I really don't believe in soulmates or matches made in heaven. If you think about it, it's a bit too strange and far-fetched for humanity. There's no such thing. And there just has to be some friction and difference of opinion somewhere in a relationship. Shoot, my wife and I fight constantly. And I do win a few rounds occasionally. I'd say about 7 or 8% of them. <laughs> so I'm used to it by now. And again, very tired. And I can't decide, but I know that I'm not going to change my mind. And please note, everyone is a victim and everyone is a villain, sometimes even at the same time. And as I volunteered for Yale University's Alzheimer's Disease Research Unit recently, I'm experiencing some memory loss, which is natural at my age. So the person who is heading up the study wanted to talk to my wife and get her opinion on it, as she will be a contact or study partner. No problem, as I am interested in their research and what is going to take place over the next few months. So I asked my wife about it, and she said that she is not supposed to discuss this with the doctor or what the doctor said to her and whatever she said about me. Okay, I guess, but I suppose that I'll know what they said sometime, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> I don't know. And speaking of which, history hides all the bodies. The time of collective visions may well be over. By now, both the brightest and the gloomiest, the most foolish and the most wisest have been set down. Thought and existence are neither brute facts nor logical givens, but paradoxical, unstable situations. To exist, according to E.M. Charan, is a habit I do not despair of acquiring. And within his writings, he claims that the mind is a voyeur, but not of the world, of itself. And we derive our vitality from our store of madness. And that is necessary in empty space and time and letting it act in its magnetic way. Interesting writer. What is the toughest tea to drink? Reality. 
I know, I got that from CBS Good Morning, reviewing the return of the crow. The crow. And a shout out to my old buddy who is no longer with us, Ernie Moore, who used to tell me that I should have died when I was a baby. <laughs> he always kept me on my toes and I do miss him. Hey, when it comes down to it, there's a lot of people that I miss and I wish I could see them again. And I recently had a PET scan and MRI within the period of about five hours, and they issued me a security personnel and law enforcement notification card. And the card states that the individual carrying this card participated in a PE nuclear imaging study involving a very small amount, a small amount, of very short radioactive material for medical research at such and such a university. The dose received by the research poses no significant danger to the public and is allowed by medical regulations. And the second sheet of paper claimed that I received the nuclear injection today, and there is a very slight possibility that you could activate a radiation security device. <laughs> I please remember that you were given a blue security and a law enforcement notification card to present proof of today's injection in the event it is in the event it is needed, and I'm out. <laughs>